Hey everybody, tonight's video is called Falsehood and Doom, and tonight we continue our pass-through study here in the book of Jeremiah, where we're going to be looking at Hananiah's falsehood and doom, and this video is recorded many days before now, as I am in Florida at the time of the post in here, and so we're going to be in Jeremiah chapter 28 tonight as we continue our way through the book of Jeremiah, and Jeremiah 28 verse 1 opens... And it happened in the same year at the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fourth year and in the fifth month, that Hananiah, the son of Azur, the prophet, who was from Gibeon, spoke to me in the house of the Lord in the presence of the priests and of all the people, saying. So in verse one, when we see the fourth year, that would be speaking about 593 BC and Hananiah was one of the several by this name in scripture and in this case he was an enemy of God's true prophet and he was distinct from the loyal Hananiah that you find in the book of Daniel chapter 1 verse 6 so when you see Hananiah don't get him mixed up with the one in Daniel and Zedekiah's reign began around 597 BC and we saw him in our last chapter as well and we see in verse one this place called Gibeon it's the hometown that's a few miles west of Jeremiah's home in Anathoth and as mentioned before Zedekiah is basically a puppet king put on the throne of Judah by King Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon and Hananiah he mean, it means Yahweh has been gracious and one thing I want to point out about Gibeon is Gibeon throughout the Bible has a reputation of being a deception and violence type place. And in Joshua chapter 9, the Gibeonites deceived the Israelites in Joshua's day. In 2 Samuel 20 verse 12 through 17, it was the scene of a contest between Saul's men and David's men. And in 2 Samuel 20, verse 8 through 10, Joab killed Amasa and Gibeon. And not only was Gibeon a priest, uh, a deceptive, violent type place, but it was also a priestly city, making Hananiah likely a bad priest. And in verse 2 and 3, it shows, Thus says the Lord of hosts. The God of Israel saying, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two year, two full years, I will bring back to this place all the vessels of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took away from this place and carried to Babylon. So the false prophet that Jeremiah warned about in the prior chapter boldly predicted victory over Babylon and the return of the temple vessels within two years. In actuality, Babylon achieved its third and final step in conquering Judah. And 11 years later, in 586 BC, as we can find in Jeremiah chapters 39 and 40 and Jeremiah 52, all those chapters will be studied, Lord willing, later, later this year in November uh, chapter 52, I believe is going to fall on New Year's Eve. And Hananiah directly challenged Jeremiah's message. And since already, four years has already passed, and Hananiah predicts that they will be gone in more, in no more than seven years, contrast to the 70 years predicted by Jeremiah back in Jeremiah 25, verse 11 and 12. So we see Hananiah, he contradicted Jeremiah's prophecy, and his message is the one that people with itching ears wanted to hear, and they were frightened at this time, so to be able to hear that, you know, oh, this is only going to happen for seven years, not 70, you know, this is, they made, like, Hananiah was like their best friend, and Jeremiah was the prophet they wanted to have killed, and in verse four, it says, and I will bring back this place Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, with all the captives of Judah who went to Babylon, says the Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. So this rash, false claim, fell into public disgrace. 
And Jeconiah soon was taken to Babylon in 597 BC, and he would live out his years there and not return to Jerusalem, as we're going to see New Year's Eve in Zechariah, uh, not Zechariah, but the book of Jeremiah, chapter 52, verse 31 through 34. And other captives either died in captivity or they didn't return until 61 years later. So we see that they both spoke in the name of the Lord. Hananiah spoke in the name of the Lord and Jeremiah spoke in the name of the Lord. But what we see is that they're not both true prophets. Either one of them is going to be a false prophet. And it seems, as I mentioned, that both cannot be right. In verse 5 and 6 it says, Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests, in the presence of all the people who stood in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. The Lord do so. The Lord perform your words, which you have prophesied, to bring back the vessels of the Lord's house and all who were carried away captive from Babylon to this place. So we see Jeremiah, he responds publicly to Hananiah, as Hananiah publicly contradicted him. And Essentially, Hanan Hananiah is calling Jeremiah a false prophet, as I mentioned. Therefore, Jeremiah found it necessary to publicly respond. And now in verses 5 and 6, I don't know if Jeremiah is saying this in a sarcastic tone or, you know, if it was his emotional side saying, you know, I hope I'm wrong because this prophecy of judgment that I gave, it, it's very heavy. And we know Jeremiah was a sensitive type guy. He was called the weeping prophet. And amen in the Hebrew, it means may it be so. And Jeremiah's response displays his love for the land and people, I believe. I believe he wasn't trying to mock Hananiah here. I believe he was, you know, seriously experiencing you know, good wishes. And Jeremiah took no pleasure prophesying the destruction of Jerusalem. And we see, though, in verse 6 that Jeremiah did not believe anything spoken by Hananiah, but he said, you know, that's a really nice thought in a way. That would be really nice if that is how it goes down, if it's true. And Jeremiah would have been happy. He would have been glad to be a false prophet if the vessels of the Lord's house and exiles came back at the seven years. In verse 7 through 9 says, Nevertheless, hear now the word which I speak to your heron and in the heron of all the people, the prophets who have been before me and before you of old prophesied against many countries and great kingdoms of war and disaster and pestilences. As for the prophet who prophesies of peace, when the word of the prophet comes to pass, that prophet will be known as the one whom the Lord has truly sent. So Jeremiah includes Hananiah with himself among the prophets and reminds them that the Lord's message has been uh, princip principally judgment, while false prophets unstoppably preached the message of peace. And God's true prophets, we know throughout the Bible, were Joel, Amos, Hosea, Micah, and Zephaniah, Nahum, and Habakkuk, and there were many more, all of whom denounced similar evils against the corrupt people of Israel. And take note that Jeremiah never denied that sometimes God's messengers bring a word of peace. However, unrepentant wickedness will never result in peace. And that's where you can test the words, because if God's people are in rebellion against him, there isn't going to be peace. There is no peace for the wicked. So when you get these knuckleheads that want to be, you know, 2025, God is going to give the United States prosperity, peace, so on and so forth. And, you know, I hear these pro modern day prophets say this stuff about America. It seems almost like every year come right about, you know, this time of year going in December. This is the vision that the Lord gave me for this upcoming year, is what they say. 
And so verse 10 and 11, it says, Then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke off the prophet Jeremiah's neck and broke it. And Hananiah spoke in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus says the Lord, Even so I will break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from the neck of all nations within the space of two full years. And the prophet Jeremiah went his way. So this phony prophet in foolishness removed the object message from the true spokesman and broke it as a sign of his own prediction coming true. And he broke Jeremiah's yoke and we see that Jeremiah doesn't immediately respond since as a true prophet he needs the Lord's authorization to speak. And Hananiah really believed his prophetic word was from God as he was sincere and invested in the message, but none of that made it true. It doesn't matter how sincere or invested one is. If you speak a lie, it's a lie. And in verse 12 through 14, now the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah after Hananiah the prophet had broken the yoke from his neck of the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Go and tell Hananiah, saying, Thus says the Lord, you have broken the yokes of wood, but you have made in their place yokes of iron. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron on the neck of all these nations, that it, they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him. I have given him the beast of the field also. So Jeremiah apparently left the meeting, and later God sent him back to confront the liar likely wearing the yokes of iron, which Hananiah could not break to replace the yokes of wood and to illustrate his message. And Hananiah's symbolic act cannot frustrate the Lord's will. God's will will come to pass regardless of man. And Hananiah dramatizes Judah's resistance, which will only make it more inevitable servitude harsher. And the yokes of iron can be understood as God's stricter punishment upon his people. And the yokes often may be expressed in sinful habits that we allow to enslave us. And yokes are instruments of servitude. Their proposed rebellion against Nebuchadnezzar would fail and that they would serve them. And Nebuchadnezzar's dominion would be so complete that he could rule over the beast of the failed. In verse 15 through 17, to finish the chapter here, it says, Then the prophet Jeremiah said to Hananiah the prophet, Hear now, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, but make this people trust in a lie. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I will cast you from the face of the earth. This year you shall die, because you have taught rebellion against the Lord. So Hananiah the prophet died the same year in the seventh month. So Jeremiah did not have such kind words here for Hananiah at the end of chapter 28. And Jeremiah told Hananiah that God did not approve of his message, that God did not speak through him, and that he was guilty of encouraging the people to trust in a lie, even to rebel, and that God would require his life that very year in 597 BC. And the true prophet's words was authenticated by Hananiah's death within two months. And we see Deuteronomy 13.5 here comes to life. And I'm going to go back to the Old Testament here to read the verse real quick. So Deuteronomy 13 verse 5. It says here, But that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken in order to turn you away from the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of bondage to entice you from the house. Oh, uh, let me step back. Who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of bondage to entice you from the way which the Lord your God commanded you to walk. So you shall put away the evil from your midst. So we see Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 5 play out. And so to wrap up tonight's video, we look at Babylon, um, we look at the broken yokes and 
the wooden yokes and the iron yokes. And we see the Hananiah contradicted Jeremiah. And in verse 5 and 6, it showed Jeremiah responded with an amen. In verse 7 through 9, Jeremiah responds by defending his prophetic ministry. Verse 10 and 11, we see the broken yoke. In verse 12 through 14, shows us the yoke of iron is to replace the wood. And one thing that we should understand about God's discipline is that if we don't respond to God's discipline, if we resist God's gentler discipline, a.k.a. the yokes of wood, we risk facing the yokes of iron. We, we risk a harsher chastisement upon ourselves. And it will be much more unpleasant in uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight through thirty, and you know when we're under chastisement, the best thing we can do is this. Matthew eleven twenty eight through thirty, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you shall find west, uh, uh, rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so it is far better, it is better for us to surrender the yoke of Jesus Christ. We need to turn to Christ. We need to embrace him as our everlasting father, our, our you know, our loving savior. And the chapter, it ends with the word of Hananiah. And we will see in next as we'll be looking at the letter to the captives. And I'll let you know when that video will be uploaded. God bless. And I hope that you have a great rest of your evening.